All right, guys, Takafu here again. So I get this question all the time, and it's how did I do my cooling? So I just recently, well, just of last night, updated my cooling, and I wanted to share with you guys exactly what I did. All right. So originally, I was running the dual core Civic radiator. It's maybe like half the size of this guy. I got it was from a, I think like a ninety, early nineties Civic and I got the dual core racing one off of uh, eBay for about uh, I think it was like 60 bucks and then I, I went to pick it apart and I pulled the original fan off of a off of an early model early 90s Civic and it fit perfectly it's one of those half radiators now the issue I was having is even though it worked for the most part, it wasn't perfect, especially at high speeds. In California here, and my car's dirty, so don't ignore that. I need to clean it up after all the work we did last night. Uh, so when your crew, he goes, in traffic, it's perfect. You know, it, it, it goes the uh, running the relay from the stock ECU to the fan, it would get up to 200 or so. The fan would kick on, it would drop it down to 194. Perfect in traffic. My issue is cruising at around three to 4,000 RPM, 30, yeah, around 3,500 RPM at around 70, 80 miles an hour because in California, we cruise at around typically 70 to 80 miles an hour instead of you know 65 or, or 75, typically it's closer to 80. And after a while, it had a hard time uh, I had a hard time cooling it. So, you know, I thought maybe it was airflow, so I cut the back of the shroud here, right, right in front of the uh, gas tank, and I cut the floor, and I replaced it with like a mesh. Still didn't help. What it was was basically, it was just too small to cool at high flow. So, as soon as you started driving on the highway, my average temps were somewhere in the neighborhood of around 200 at around 60 65 but as soon as i got to 70 75 it would jump up to about 210 and stay there if it was a really hot day you know the average california weather is around 70 80 degrees you know during spring and fall during the summer it can easily be 80 up to 100 degrees so when you especially when you got to those higher temperatures it would start to freaking cruise up to like 220 so that was just too hot for me. I think the average Subaru is supposed to cruise between one, I think like 185 to 195, 200 tops is still the safe zone. So I went ahead and I got this RX, uh, this RX-7 radiator off of eBay. It came with the fan, the 14 inch fan. It cost me, I think like around $149. Um, it came with the aftermarket fan instead of stock fan. Uh, and this was from, I believe, an 80, it was an 82 to uh, 93, I think it was. It's the one that has the tabs on the side. Now, because with the tabs, we ended up using those as like mock holders in order to hold it in. And then we put a little holder underneath to hold it up that we've just bolted to the body. So that's why it's kind of hackney, you know, kind of cut up. Again, budget build, me and my buddy, garage stuff. We don't have, or backyard stuff. We don't have like a, a fancy garage and all that stuff. And I don't know if it's easy to see, but basically from that little lip where the, uh, where the gas tank sits from, the, from this front lip here all the way around, we went and cut out, and you're fine cutting that out. There, I, there isn't much support for anything there. I have a front sway bar, all that good stuff. So you know, keeping everything, or I got the heavy duty sway bar. I took, I got one of these guys. It's kind of like an AC ducting deal to help direct the flow from behind down and through the front. Works just fine. I went and I put this scoop here, and I just kind of bang the front up to help direct it as like a mini scoop up. And it works perfectly for me. And it in, in, goes in typically 70, 80 degrees uh, on the streets, gets to 200, 
cools it right down to like 180 within just a few seconds. On the highway, he goes, I, I'm on the highway doing like 60, 70 miles an hour, or I should say 70, 80 miles an hour, I haven't peaked anything past 180, 186. So one of the hardest parts you're gonna come across is fitting in the pipes on this side right here. Now, what we did was it's a inch and a half at the top here for the RX-7 radiator and from the front to the back we were actually running one and a quarter pipes so what we had to do was we got just like a little one and a quarter to inch and a half adapter I don't know if you can see it down there that we just ran to adapt it it's at the bottom there it's hard to see there you go and then at the top what we ended up doing it's a little hackneyed because you know we're not really, I'm not really good at welding, but my, my buddy helped me out and we ended up JB welding with any little spots that we had left, is we ended up taking a uh, inch and a half pipe, cutting it at like a 45 degree angle and welding it to make this L, this L right here that just fit. And it keeps it from it keeps us from crimping all the lines are uncrimped and it, it actually works i'm very surprised it works very well it holds it, it keeps it nice and cool it does a great job now what i did to take care of getting rid of bubbles in my system was we jacked up just this front right side so so that this filler was the highest point and we filled that up it surprisingly got rid of bubbles pretty quick when it, when it was nice and cool, then we let it warm up. And what I did is in the back, I went and I actually got a filler bottle. All right, I guess it's an expansion bottle is what they call it. From a late mo model Miata. I don't remember what year it was. I know it was like in the newer section for Miatas. And so what I did was at the top, I have it coming from the top of the motor uh, to where the heater hose is. Where, so I have the heater hose going from the top of the motor into here and then the bottom of the heater hose which goes from the bottom uh, it's supposed to go from the heater to the, the bottom of the thermostat. I have it running from the bottom of the bottle capped off here and you fill it up just to the half and what you do is you uh, run the car let, it, let the thermostat open and I make sure to just keep filling that up. I can take the cap off, I make sure to fill that up, and it sucks, it allows it the, the hot air to heat up, it allows the, the thermostat to heat up and warm up, because this, if you don't have this, this is where a lot of, bulk of air gets trapped, is right underneath the thermostat, which is on the bottom right hand side, and that will jack you up, you will get, it'll be a pain in the ass to get the air bubbles out, but once you do that, you should have no problems. You can either make your own bottle. I think the best one I've seen is where people take the, the, the exhaust uh, water flow coming from the top of the motor and they, they curve it back around and they go into a box. That's prob that works just as well, maybe even better because you get larger tubes and all that stuff. I have mine running underneath. Again, we just it was just a budget thing. I probably should run it to the left make it a little easier if I need to take the motor out so that's how I ran my cooling other than that I just again I just have I just have uh, inch and a half hoses Let's see if I can show you guys here just have inch and a half pipes running or inch and a quarter sorry not inch and a half inch and a half pipes running down the center channel from the front all the way to the back and I haven't had any problems my car isn't super isn't super low it's you know maybe like a, a little a little under a foot from the ground you know I don't I'm running uh, the drop spindles in the front so if you're if your car is slammed you're definitely gonna have to uh, lift it up but otherwise I haven't had any clearance issues I haven't had any uh, rubbing or leaks or anything like that. 
So if you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment um, and have fun. You know, like I said, I, a lot of a lot of this is basically just simple fabrication. You know, just some basic bending, some basic welding. We we use just a basic uh, uh, TIG welder in order to get a lot of those things in there. It's not perfect, but I haven't had any leaks yet. It keeps this. It keeps the system nice and cool, and on average, I cruise at around 80 to, you know, 100 miles an hour in this guy. All right, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll try to post the link of where I got my radiator. You know, I got it from a company that's, that sold it on eBay, but they're here in California, so it uh, got to me pretty quickly. All right, thanks a lot, guys. I'll talk to you later.